Hey guys, Kid Aikino here, and well, here we are. It's the last Kaiju Binge video. This one will bring us up to Godzilla King of the Monsters, which had just recently come out at the time I made the list. Back when we thought Godzilla vs. Kong was coming out about a year ago now, I would have had to crank out one of these videos a week at five films per video in order to finish in time, which would have been insane. As it is, it looks like I'm just barely making it to the finish line in time. Let's go. First up, we've got Pacific Rim Uprising. Now, I hated Monsters Dark Continent, but I didn't really give a shit about it, and it was at least going for kind of a war as hell angle in the end, and depicted US troops' abuses of civilians in the countries they occupy as being wrong, or at least having a limit to what can be excused. Uprising turns the Pan-Pacific Defense Corps into a bloated, overfunded world police, which is a perfectly valid and plausible premise, but the movie also seems to think this is basically good and cool. Mako fucking Mori cheerfully and smugly coerces a child into the service, where she joins a bunch of other pilots in training scouted as kids. There's a throwaway line about that being kind of fucked up, but it's countered with the idea that this grooming shit makes it easier for them to drift as pilots, which also exempts the film from having to deal with drift compatibility as a concept if it doesn't feel like it. As opposed to developing from an intimate bond or at least a deep understanding, it's kind of just treated like having compatible birth charts or something. The whole movie embodies some of the worst of the MCU school of filmmaking, including the obnoxious quippy dialogue. You compromised my command center. Wow. Your command center. Yes, Wait, my sorry, command sorry, center. I, didn't hear that. I thought everyone. Oh yeah, because they're really right? worked out okay? well, right? If they want right? to talk lip and you bottom lip, they need to meet and become Smart. friends. That's good if you one. close up, right? Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, I Conversation done. Good. But I had honestly kind of forgotten about that next to the bland visuals and overt militarism. Nothing here looks as good as anything did in the first film, and the Jaeger and Kaiju fights lack almost any of the sense of weight that made the originals so unique and satisfying. It's got the slick sheen of a recruitment ad, right down to the badass montage of child soldiers getting ready for battle. The ugliest and most blatant bit is probably the ending, with Charlie Day, a central figure in the first film's message of jock nerd solidarity, shoved in a locker and receiving threats from John Boyega to invade the homeworld of the alien race behind the kaiju. I once got a bit cheeky on Twitter and added the director of this movie saying he should have just left Pacific Rim alone not my finest moment, and he went on this tangent about how shockingly awful working on a big franchise movie is and how we'd be so shocked if we ever knew how the sausage was made. I don't doubt that per se, but if it really was anyone else's fault he made a fascist Pacific Rim movie, I'm not sure why he did the press junket in a military uniform. Rampage was a real relief after that. It's not an incredibly deep or thoughtful film, but I think the kind of movie where Dwayne Johnson plays a primatologist was exactly the right route to go considering the tone of the source material. You've got a healthy skepticism about the government and industry in there, but the focus is on delivering a fun and well-made film. And everybody involved knows exactly what they're doing. They're playing cartoon characters, and they commit to the bit. The storytelling is very good meat and potatoes in service of some very solid CGI action. It delivers the goods and it doesn't take any more time than it has to. I am definitely biased because the climax is staged in Chicago, but tell me you wouldn't love to see a monster dramatically appear in a movie someplace you pass on the way to work every day. I still need to go through the Willis Tower sequence and see if I can spot the building I work in. This movie rocks. Godzilla City on the Edge of Battle holds up in a similar way to Planet of the Monsters. I still think it's a very slow build-up for most of the runtime until you get to the confrontation with Godzilla in the last act, but I can appreciate the character stuff leading up to it more now that I kinda know what I'm in for. The Bilu Solido, this trilogy's take on the aliens who created the original Mechagodzilla, are characterized as kinda condescending atheist types from the beginning, but the expansion on that and the gradual reveal of the extreme eugenicist depths of their reverence for the evolutionary process in this film are really effective. I also understand the disappointment in the lack of a conventional Mechagodzilla here, but I think Mechagodzilla City is an interesting take on the idea of a city fighting back with the kind of weaponized urban infrastructure that was kind of breezed by without comment in Destroy All Monsters, and which Hideaki Anno depicted an improvised form of in Shin Godzilla and a more developed version of in Evangelion. I always thought Godzilla the Planet Eater was the real banger out of the anime trilogy, and that remains so even as I've come to appreciate the first two more. Things get tense pretty quickly and remain so until the shit really hits the fan with Ghidorah's summoning, 
which doesn't take long. This one, in contrast to the first two, really moves. I happened to check how far along I was at one point while re-watching, and was stunned to see I was already 50 minutes in. I guess I'm just a sucker for the cosmic horror here, and protagonists being interrogated about their motives and beliefs through elaborate sequences that happen in their heads. All in all, I think I stand by a lot of the criticisms of the trilogy that I raised in my collaboration with Blue Nova, but the movies worked better for me this time around. At last, we come to Godzilla King of the Monsters, a movie I've kind of soured on a little bit. I think the hype led me to forgive a lot when I first saw it, but nearly two years on, it's a bit of a mess. It seems to want to both be the kind of big, fun, colorful monster rumble Skull Island was, and deal with the kind of somber, weighty stuff that Gareth Edwards' Godzilla did, and I'm not saying you can't do both, but they kind of clash here, with the latter aspect really suffering. It tries to keep Godzilla's nuclear roots while also doing this nature fighting back thing, and it ends up with this confused messaging where nuclear radiation stimulates the regrowth of plant life, and the guy who spent most of the last Godzilla advocating against the use of nukes personally detonates a warhead in an undiscovered ancient ruin to revive Godzilla so he can save the day. The villains have this eco-fascist line where the human population needs to be culled to restore a natural balance, and this is refuted insofar as killing loads of innocent people is wrong, but the premise of overpopulation is never really challenged. I know litigating the whole issue of the ecological crisis we're in right now and giving a proper appraisal of its cause is a lot to ask of a summer blockbuster about giant monsters, but it's not helped by the director subsequently posting cringe about how maybe the villains are right on Twitter. I don't expect flawless politics from movies like this, but if it's gonna be this bad and incoherent, I would really rather they just didn't bother. As straightforward entertainment, it might be fine, except for all the quipping. Bradley Whitford especially is relentless, but everybody is cracking wise all the damn time in this movie, whether it suits the moment or not. There are plenty of cool monster moments in this. I'll give Mike Doherty credit, he seems to love monsters as much as we all do, and I like his emphasis on apocalyptic imagery. There are some lore nods that really don't work. The Oxygen Destroyer is introduced very hastily in the middle of a chaotic action scene and not really given the weight it deserves, and naming the cool underwater base Castle Bravo might be the most astoundingly ill-conceived thing in the entire MonsterVerse so far. So yeah, this film probably would have been better off as a straightforward big CGI blockbuster without the nods to themes in history it can't seem to handle tactfully. I'm somewhat more optimistic about Godzilla vs. Kong for that reason. It looks like it's sticking with Wow Cool Robot after King of the Monsters fumbled war is bad. And that officially wraps up the Kaiju binge. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to be covering Godzilla vs. Kong on here, especially since I'm going to be getting ready to move again pretty soon, but there will be something. Until then, I can't thank my patrons enough for their support, especially Bob Burns' Exploder Button, John Pinnear, Kiefer Beelman, and Ryan Clark. If you like this channel or want to support the film preservation work I'm also doing, I hope you'll consider becoming a patron at the link in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.